so so we have we have all these four you know aspects or categories of of resources combining in all uh, production uh, or labor processes that we can conceive of in, in the modern day and age. Um, but I mean, the, the strength of this model for explaining it is that you can track it through any period in history and, and see how it, you can understand what's going on, that the developments that were happening in that period through the interplay of these four factors. Yeah, and, and the important thing is that this is natural economics. This is what economics should fundamentally be about. When, when, when you're using a word like economics, it actually means household. So it, 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 the, this, in the word itself, is this uh, notion of uh, being self-sustained. Mm -hmm. You're looking at an isolated system. Then what happens, in, especially in modern days, and it's actually been going on for several thousand years, is you add higher and higher degrees of interpersonal communication and trade and, and bartering and ownership laws and all these abstract things which is something about the social uh, st structure and agreement really we agree that the guy that calls himself a farmer can now buy and own the farm hmm. and so on and so forth right and we agree that if I say that this uh, has a price of one gold coin, then when I exchange it with you, it's going to mean the same. So it's a, it's a lot about consensus and social agreement. But this has been deracinated, it's been, it's been uprooted, it's been destroyed with a modern abstraction. Well, I mean, there's several aspects of that, but the first of all, we, we see a well, historical driving towards greater and greater complexity. I mean, the greater complexity just emerges. You, you don't even need to, to will it, it seems. Uh, with new, new tools, new knowledge, uh, new access to new raw material, access to new raw materials, well, uh, then labor or human activity turns in new directions and, and greater complexity seems to emerge. Um, and, and, and this th this is where it's, it's kind of important to, to, to realize that in because you you have this over unity thing that every time a human being starts producing something they usually produce more value and more wealth um, than they put in there so um, there's always a, a an over unity effect um, and then the product is usually something that have a limited lifetime. Mm -hmm. So back in natural economics, growth was actually not really possible. It was more like a uh, ebb and flow of tide because you would always have a due date on the product. Mm or elastability really um, when it comes to tools or housing and things like that then you could of course do upkeep and maintain, maintaining it and uh, make sure that it doesn't actually um, get destroyed and lost but there was also always some sort of natural negative growth you would call it the, the entropic law of economics and now we have been pushing a, an agenda and a, an understanding of how economics should work, which is basically based on growth and a solely anti-entropic uh, principle. Mm -hmm. Which is, yes, it's there because humans are always able to put in more labor. But if you look at the labor intensity of modern man compared to indigenous people, this is just slave driving. Mm -hmm. They're just whipping us harder and harder. Americans are working what us Danes would call two jobs. Right. All of them, basically. Yeah. And then, well, you say they are, I mean, that uh, ca can be a problematic concept to use, but uh, the demands of the ever-increasing complex systems that we inhabit uh, and, and, you know, co-exchange with each other uh, demand more labor for, for just, just upkeep. Yeah, and this is basically because not only have they have they pushed this agenda of uh, perpetual growth, uh, 
they've also kind of turned the world upside down, um, making what should be the most inexpensive, they've made that the most expensive. Things that have uh, mm, that shouldn't have any intrinsic value, things that shouldn't cost anything, is what they're trying to make really expensive and, and hard to get. Right, and this is anti supply and demand. Right, we'll, we'll get to that in two seconds. Just one of your comments on, uh, I mean, the, the whole problematic of uh, a planet of finite resources. And, and, and from, from the model of these four uh, elements uh, labor, knowledge, tools, and raw materials. Uh, I heard you say before that the only thing that, that isn't, uh, you know, abundant in, in that equation uh, are the raw materials, of which, you know, the, well, potentially we could run out of any raw material, and then we'd have to do something crazy like <gasps> recycle. Um, the, the, the problem is that they, these days there's a lot of talk about peak oil and these things, and it, it's it's partly true that there's always a limited resource available of raw materials, but <laughs> it's, it's really... Um, the accessibility and the cost mm. that's going to change. How much of the natural resources do you need to invest in order to get the, the, the result that you want? Exactly. And, 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 and one of the phenomena uh, in modern day that's really scary is that what we've been doing is we have been we have been doing the same with the natural resources that the banking system has been doing with printing money. We've basically been borrowing mm. and pushing a debt forward. We've been releasing or printing new money into the system, in a natural resource system. That's what you do when you use oil. You make something that used to have a higher cost, you make that free. You make that extremely inexpensive. Which leads to, you know, in developed nations, middle classes having more money than they know what to do with and, and that leads to aesthetic overconsumption. Well there was this there was a, the case about um, the solar uh, company Solaris I think it was that the American government had, had invested in. Um, they had a production cost of six dollars per unit and they sold it at three. But since they had huge subsidies and loans and, and stuff, of course they could be they, they could run the business for quite a long time, really. Um, but not indefinitely, because there was no profit, there was a loss, and it's the same with modern production of things like food, because we are using oil as an energy source in all our systems. Every other resource becomes e extremely cheap, but the efficiency is is nothing. I it's we are in a I think it's a twenty to one. We are using twenty times more energy to get um, one uh, joule out of the soil. Mm. 